Hi friends, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another video. So for today's video, I am pulling out an old rubber stamp from Craft & Kimmy. This is by Rachel Ann Miller. It is still available as a digital image. Um, the rubber is long since retired, but I figured since it was available as a digi, I was going to pull this one out and have some fun with a little bit of a play using something older that you can still get your hands on in one form or another. So I will link to that digital image in the description box below, of course. I'm stamping that out with the ink on three no line fade out ink that they have. I really, really like it. Now I went into this image going, I'm going to paint it in pretty soft colors using my watercolors and it's going to be really, really pretty. And when I got to the point where I was like, I don't know if I want to keep doing this with watercolors. This is really not pretty. <laughs> Some of you may love it, but in my personal opinion, I just found it, like I said, really not pretty. But it gave me a good base to put some colored pencils over top because I wasn't going to spend this long on a card and not find a way to rescue it. So I'm starting off just with a little bit of buff titanium and shell pink mixed together. There might be a little brown in it. I don't know. It's off of my palette mud out of my Mexico palette but I'm assuming it's probably just buff titanium and shell pink with maybe a touch of sepia in it. Blending that all out onto the skin tone and then I'm coming in with some sepia and burnt umber mixed together to put the first coat here on our little teddy bear. I love this image. I've always enjoyed her images. I thought they were so pretty. I'm super excited that she does digis now. I'm going to have to go do a little bit of shopping probably and I haven't bought digital images in a very long time. so. I'm, I'm quite excited that she has digis. Putting that first little wash of brown on top of this. And at this point, I'm like, this is kind of cute. I'm okay with this. Taking out, this is quinacridone coral from Daniel Smith. Most of the colors and actually all the colors I use on this image are Daniel Smith. But so this is quinacridone coral with tons of water in it. I really like how when the watercolor hits that ink on three ink, it gets really, really dark. It's almost like it just where the ink is absorbs that watercolor so much. I just think it's really pretty. I like that look. I like that it's a little bit messy and a little bit off-putting and it gives it more of a storybook feel to me. So I'm messing around with the blue here and I added a little bit of green to it to give me a light teal color. Lots of water in order to have a super light color. I don't want anything really really dark at all in this image. Especially at this point. This point I'm like I want it soft and dreamy and ethereal looking like she's floating and that's what I'm after and I, it was it was not what I was after <laughs> it was what I was after in my brain it was not what I was after on the paper though I definitely needed to go darker with the shadows and by the point I realized that I was just like I am over the water oh the watercolor ran through the pinhole there and all ran down the side of the palette so I just went and picked it up to keep going gonna make the bear's belly and muzzle and ears and things match the teal color that is on her little dress and now I have some dark some gray it's like all the colors mixed together basically to paint her little shoes here next up is the balloon again using that same tealy color. You can see I mixed up a whole big puddle of it there just to have a bunch more. Especially once I decided to make the balloon this color. I didn't know how many layers I was going to end up putting on. So I figured I should have a nice big puddle of it. And it's a color I use a lot. So I tend to mix it up and just keep it on the palette as you can see with all the others there. A little bit of light yellow for the first coat on the little bird here. I do decide that that yellow is not dark enough and I go over it with more of a quinacridone gold. But taking that same color from the teddy bear and I'm using it in the hair. I really like to carry colors through the image so that I don't have like 14 shades of brown and nine shades of blue and in the same image. I kind of like to use the same one in different areas. So once that first light wash cup um, dries, I mix up a little bit more of the color and I go back in to give it another coat. So this is where I'm going to create like the shadow of the part and where the hair pinches together behind the ear or behind the hand holding the balloon on the one side and where it pinches into the ponytail on the other side and just give it a little bit of depth and dimension to it before we go back and add all the little strands of hair and stuff from the artist on lines. So I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. I hope everybody's gearing up for New Year. This should go up before New Year's. I'm hoping so because I'm talking like it is. So it has to now, right? Not the way this works. <laughs> 
I hope everybody's excited for 2021. I hope 2021 is better. I I don't know. It, whatever. I'm so far beyond knowing what's going on. I'll just like hang out at home and go to work. <laughs> so once I get those shadows put into the hair, I'm going to take my little brush here with more saturated color and add some of those um, artist drawn hairlines back in. And then I decided that the skin needed a little bit more shadow. So I added a little bit more sepia to the mix and put it up on the top there, as you can see, and giving it a little more shadow, some rosy cheeks. I also make her little nose nice and pink and rosy. Uh, her little mouth for a smile. Then I'm going to take that black color that I was using on her boots, that dark gray, and I'm going to add the strings back in for the balloon. Darken up our little bird. I'm just going back and adding more details and more colors where I think it's needed. Um, I do make the little string or the little air movement underneath the bird blue. Her nose and feet go orange. Now I'm going to darken up the hair again. This is where I'm starting to realize this is not turning out the way I envision it turning out. On the video, it actually looks super cute. It, I probably could have got away with just going in with some darker shadows on the blues and the pinks and it would have been fine. Actually, it would have probably been super cute, but in my mind, I'm like, this is a lost cause. And at this point, I'm like 45-ish uh, minutes invested. And I don't want to throw this away and start over. Like, I, I really don't want to start over. So we'll add a little bit of shading with the coral, with the quinacridone coral. I added those hair pieces, trying to darken it up just a little bit, seeing if that'll make it look the way I want it to look. And actually, I think it's super cute. And I probably could have left it alone. So let's give her something to stand on. So we go in and I use that sap green and didn't think it was dark enough. So I went with the undersea green over top of it. Then I'll take that and I'll make just like some little sprigs of grass and leaves and things to house some flowers on top of. And then I was mixing up that pink color and it splattered all over the page. So now I have to splatter it everywhere. <laughs> I said, guys, this one was a mess. Like I accidentally did that. So then I had to put splatters all over the place. Now I'm adding the little dots for flowers at the bottom. I actually don't mind the splatters all over. It worked out taking some gouache to put the highlight on the balloon. Let's stamp the sentiment in black, which should have never been stamped in black. I should have stamped it in like a brown or a light gray. And that's where I realized the coloring is way too light. So now I'm like, what am I going to do? I don't want to go back in with watercolors and try and deal with going around the eyes and all that kind of stuff. So I pulled out my pencils. As you can see, I'm already coloring as I'm saying that. And I just take like a darker brown and a mid-tone and a couple light colors. I'm not even particular about them being my standard skin tones. This one's light flush. It's out of the new um, portrait set from Luminance. But I more just want to create some more shadows and give her some more depth on her. So you can see how it kind of rounded out her face. It worked out beautiful. I'm super happy with the way this card came out in the end. I really, really like it once I went over it with the pencils. Um, it added a lot of texture because of the watercolor paper, which made me happy. And I'm just really excited with the way it looks. It has more of that storybook feel that I was after because the colored pencils aren't solid. Um, it was just one light coat of colored pencils. So you can see the texture and everything from the pencil itself, which made me really happy. I'm super, like I said, I'm super enthralled. I love the way this card came out. It, it worked out so nice in the end. <laughs> putting a little more lighter color over top of that because I still want to have that blend. I may, I'm enjoying the pencil texture on the paper, but I do want the colors to look blended together. I don't want them to look like there's a stark line between everything. So that's adding the pink on her little stockings. Now I'll come in and I'll work on the blues starting up with the balloon. So I did go a lot darker with the darkest color, especially on the blue. I thought it needed it just to have it stand out from the pink and from everything else going on. I wasn't using a lot of the dark blue, just just enough to create a little bit more depth to it, I suppose, is the word I'm after. I'm blending that out with a couple other colors. You'll see how with this one here, when I get into the blue, I'm not actually blending it through the entire image. Like there comes a point where I'm just barely touching the paper with my pencil and letting it fade out into the watercolor and I'm just going to leave it like that. I don't need to blend everything all the way, especially because I'm after that pencil texture on the paper. It made me really, really happy. Like I said, 
going back into the dress and doing the exact same thing as the balloon with the darker blue here. And it's just that process over and over again. So it was really exciting to have something not work out when I finished, when I finished at the time it was irritating. It was super irritating. I was not a happy camper. I was like, are you kidding me? Why? Why? And yeah, because uh, yeah, anyway, um, but it was really fun to take another medium and finish the card and not throw it away and not give up and not invest an hour and be like, now I have to start over and then not start over and work on something else because I ain't going to color this image again right away, especially if I have to throw it away because now I'm not happy, <laughs> but it was really nice to have it work out in the end and to, um, push through the point where I thought the card was done and it didn't look as good as I wanted it to. And it wasn't completed as well as I wanted it to be completed to get to the point where I can look at the card and be like, I really like that. Like I'm super happy with how this turned out. It has that storybook feel that I was after when I went into the card to start with. It looks finished. It looks kind of messy. It's super cartoony. It's just really, really pretty. It still has that ethereal quality to it where it's almost like she's dreaming and she's daydreaming. And that's what I love about, um, Rachel Ann Miller designs like her, her images is they all have that very storybook. I'm not sure what I'm doing there. Nothing. Apparently. I don't know. I guess I should have cropped that out looking for my pencil sharpener. Um, <laughs> but all of her images have this storybook feel to them. Like they're like they came out of an illustration for a storybook and she's just letting us color them. And I don't know, it just kind of tickles my fancy. It's something a little different than most things I color. That's for sure. I definitely do a lot of florals and a lot of, um, images with very clean lines in them. And this one's a little bit messier, but I can't wait to do more of them. I'm so happy with how this one came out. You guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, all that's left now, I think is to put the string back in. I decided it needed to be a little bit darker just due to the rest of the image. Then I'm going to mat this up on some pink and some blue cardstock. Then we're going to add it to a top folding A2 size card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, just using some double sided tape like I always do. And then I did pull out some Studio Katia, um, just clear drops that I found while cleaning the craft room because I've actually been working on that. So I'm going to add a few of those on takes a little bit of time. They're a little bit finickety and that's it for this card. You guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and seeing how something didn't work out the way I wanted it to and just getting through it and making, making yourself happy with it at the end. Not everything comes together easy all the time. And I figured it would be nice to share a kerfluffle a little bit with you guys, even though it worked out. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And if you'd like to see me color more of her images, please let me know. I'll talk to you very soon in another one. Bye for now.